Hey folks, um, I've got a great episode for you today on I Am Northwest Arkansas. I got to sit down with Hannah Withers from Leverett Lounge and Maxine's Tap Room and The Little Bread Company. We really talked about a lot of great stuff in this episode. And unfortunately, right at the beginning, I did not hit record on my digital recorder. So you are going to notice a slight difference at the beginning of the interview versus the rest of the interview. And so just hold tight with me for the first few minutes and the sound gets better, I promise. Actually, the beginning sound is not as bad as you would think. And um, But I'm an audiophile, so I'm a little bit of a snob about it. But anyway, the information was so great and the start of our conversation was so just organic that um, I didn't want to lose it. So here is Hannah Withers from Leverett Lounge and Maxine's Tap Room. I hope you enjoy this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilbur. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Woolburn, and today, today I've got a special guest for you. I am here with the one and the only Hannah Withers. You may know the name. Um, she is, as somebody told me, she is a de facto mayor of Fayetteville. Um, she is many things. Uh, she's an entrepreneur. She's a mom. She's a wife. Uh, supposedly, she's a really good friend which is great, and I I came here today uh, here in Maxine's Tap Room, which some of you may be familiar with. It was recently rated one of the best bars in the United States. Not in Fayetteville, not in Northwest Arkansas, not in Arkansas, in the U.S. And so I'm excited to be here today with Hannah and to learn more about what uh, she and her husband, uh, Ben, are doing throughout their entrepreneurial empire to learn a little bit more about her experiences, her background, her superhero origin story, as we like to say here on the podcast, and just just to kind of check in and see what's going on. And as I, as I sit here today, I'm looking at some a beautiful arrangement of flowers. The bar is quiet and still. It's early in the morning, so it, it's not drinking hour yet, and we're both enjoying some caffeine. But I must say that this is really an impressive place, and, and Hannah, I really appreciate you uh, agreeing to, to be on the podcast today. How are you doing? I'm great. It's my pleasure to be here. Good, good. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got here. Um, we had a chance to talk prior to starting this podcast, but um, you know, I've, I've, I only know what I've read about you and what I've, the anecdotal stories that I've heard from other people, but I'd rather just hear it directly from you. Uh, you're not from Arkansas originally. I'm Are not. You? I grew up in Denver. Okay. I moved to Eureka Springs, Arkansas when I was, um, I think I was 20. I might have been 19. And I was sort of traveling across the United States. I had lived for a few months down in Mexico. I'd spent six months um, hitchhiking from Canada to Mexico on the West Coast with a friend of mine. And we eventually came across uh, Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and I ended up getting stuck, as many people do, <laughs> happily getting stuck. Yeah, and you know, Eureka Springs is interesting. I, I've, I've, I've only visited it a few times since I've, I've been here in Northwest Arkansas. I've been here for five years now and, and actually went up there. It reminded me a lot of uh, Berkeley, California, uh, where I lived for a couple of years. And I, I just, it seems like there's a strong artist community up there. and. There's a lot of ha- lot of things happening, and I actually have a friend that just moved up to. Um, there's an island up there. It's a small little s- subset of uh, of uh, and I'll, the name will come. Holiday to me. Island. Holiday Island. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. When I heard the name, I was like, "Really? There's an island?" And she was like, "Yeah, we're we're right up there. It's like a little peninsula." <laughs> but um, but but she's up there by Eureka, and she drives through Eureka all the time now because she is in Holiday Island. She is on Holiday Island, and uh, I thought that was kind of cool. But it just 
it, it all it told me was that there's so much up here in northwest Arkansas that if you don't get out and explore, you'll miss it. And uh, it seems like you've had a chance to explore quite a bit, and, and uh, your explorations have actually colored some of the things that you've decided to do, both personally as well as in business. And I'd love for you just to kind of tell the audience a little bit about how you got started when it came when it came to starting a business. And I believe maybe the Little Bread Company was the first endeavor that you did here. Um, actually, my first business was when I um, moved to Eureka. I was 21, and I was working for a man named Greg who owned the Cosmic Cup Coffee Shop on Center Street. And... Um, he was um, sick with AIDS, and it was sort of his dying wish to open. And his parents managed the New Orleans Hotel, Sally and Marvin. And when uh, Greg passed away, I was his only employee. And Sally and Marvin um, sold me for a song, whatever was left of that shop. And so I, I think that was my first. I had a good year and a half run, which is a long time for a 20-year-old for anything. (laughs) We're at the Cosmic Cup on Center Street in Eureka Springs. Is that place still there? No, not at all. Okay. Uh -uh. So that's where you cut your teeth in entrepreneurship Mm -hmm. for the most part. And made a ton of mistakes. (laughs) All the mistakes. (laughs) All the mistakes. So then when did you end up here in Fayetteville? Um, I met uh, my husband, Ben, in Eureka Springs, and we, uh, both of us have worked in restaurants since we were 13 ish um he's 48 i'm 43 so we've both been doing this for other people for a long time and when we got married we were quickly uh pregnant and expecting our son quinn and we're in a hurry to figure out what we were going to do when we grew up and decided to open our own place in eureka um that was in 2001 and um we opened we built a commercial kitchen on our property and we delivered wholesale uh, breads and pastries to B&Bs and restaurants and grocery stores and we eventually branched out into Fayetteville which is where we met um, Carrie and Cindy Arcega and we were delivering to their stores we opened our retail location of Little Bread Company in Eureka Springs in 2003 and Um, A couple years into that, Cindy and Carrie came to us and said, we have this location on Block Street that's always been our bakery. Um, We think that you guys would be a really good fit for taking this over. And we opened our second location of Little Bread Company in Fayetteville in 2007. And we ran them together for about a year and a half. Wow. And then ultimately you closed the one in Eureka Springs? Yeah, 2008 was rough on a business that was (laughs) as young as we were in a tourist town um, in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas. And so we eventually closed that location and made a go of the Fayetteville location. And, you know, we rented a house over here. We never really intended on staying permanently. We We thought that we would get this one open and running and go back to our life in Eureka and we thought it was going to be that simple and that's not how it worked out (laughs) it never is it never is there's always something else that's part of it and so you you got the little bread company you guys survived the downturn the financial downturn because you know I guess people still have to eat bread on a regular basis so yeah. there is that piece of it and and uh I've, I've been over there a couple of times and it's it's really good and and so you you turn that into actually a very successful and um quite recognized establishment in the area and then you decided to sell it to to some of the people that worked with you we did i mean i think um i think that we learned um I think through our experiences working in a community like Eureka Springs and meeting people like Carrie and Cindy Arcega, um, people who are other small business owners who uh, respect the people that they work with and they sort of build these families within their businesses. We really wanted it to continue to exist, but we were tired. We did it for 14 years. The early mornings, I mean, we would get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and be done by noon. Our son, when he was smaller, would wake up and brush his teeth and do the crossword puzzles with customers and be ready by 7 a.m. in the dining room. (laughs) And um, I think we just got tired. And so we thought that our best option was to sell it to somebody that um, had done it with us and who worked with us and knew how we did things in our community and also in a managerial way. 
So how, since you turned it over, how's it going? I think really well. They're getting ready to expand into a second place next door that used to be the barber shop. And I think Little Bread is getting bigger without us, which is exciting for them. That is. And then at some point in time, I'm assuming that the next iteration was, if, from, from a business perspective, was Maxine's Tap Room? Yeah, we, um, when we moved onto the street, when we moved onto Block Avenue with Little Bread Company, uh, about six months after we opened this location of Little Bread, we went under a major construction project, the entire street did, and it lasted for almost a year and a half. I mean, there were month-long periods where people were walking across wooden planks to get to our front doors and there was nowhere to park down here and it, there were a couple of us that didn't make it <laughs> through that long period and it was part of our big downtown rebuild um, the street looked a lot funkier uh, 10 years ago but we decided after the construction that we wanted to remind people that we were here and that we were open and so um, there was a group of business owners, Wendy Finn from I Am Spa, uh, Jason from Hugo's, uh, Wade Ogle, who then was JR's and is now Block Street Records. And we all sort of pulled together and sponsored um, an event that we wanted to have on our street to highlight what we did. And that was the beginning of Block Street Block Party. And that lasted for, I think, about eight years. And within that... Uh, really special and um, cool time of all of us working together on the street and knowing each other well. Um, we met Andrea, who was Maxine's great niece, and she is uh, the woman who inherited Maxine's bar and business and name uh, after Maxine passed away in 2008. And, and this place is really a, a veritable institution. I think I'm looking at a picture here. Is that Maxine up there? These are all Maxine in These, here, oh, yes. Okay. There's Block Street in 1937, and um, her first day with her sister standing outside the front door right here in 1950. It's been, Next year will be a 70-year anniversary for this oh bar. Gosh. So c could this bar be termed a speakeasy, or what would you... Um, I, you know, that's tricky. I, I don't consider it a speakeasy bar. I think, um, I think we in all of our restaurants and ideas and places that my husband and I have created have always tried to make a space that is hospitable um, with our staff. We try and work with very kind people and people who enjoy serving other people. We also um, try and make it a quality product, but in a very accessible and inclusive environment. Um, so I, I don't know what kind. I don't know really what you call it. We serve some, pro, we serve some pre 1960s classic cocktails, which is how we started when we sort of came in and remodeled um, this this space in uh, 2013. We started out with eight classic cocktails, and just because of what cocktails are doing sort of in the culinary world and because that's what Ben and I enjoy and that's what our bartenders are paying attention to it's sort of evolved into its own thing it's um we all work together we change the menus every three to four months and all of our bartenders will bring four to five drinks to the table we all taste everything we tweak everything we decide what's going on the menu together it's all very collaborative and has sort of turned into its own thing and I, we, it's a complicated thing to take a place that has been here as long as it has been with so many people that have so many memories of their own experiences in this place. Um, it's, we, it's tricky. I mean, this place has a long history way before we, it was even a blink in our eye. And so we try and pay respect to the time and the era that Maxine opened the bar in, which was 1950. That was our original idea. And now it's sort of turned into its own thing. And we don't really know what that is. <laughs> I would say a craft cocktail bar, yes. But okay. I mean, we also, you know, we serve a lot of local beers and we 
you know, we also host a little live music, and speakeasies sound secret to me, like one of the places that you text to get into the back door of in the alley. Um, and so I don't, I don't know. There, yeah. I don't know. Well, I will say you, you're right. It does sound secret. It, it, it is. It is. A, I thought it was a best kept secret because I'm like, man, I've been here for five years and I just found out about this place like six months ago, and I, I'm like, we're, you know, <laughs> a nice place to go to have a drink and hang out and enjoy some time with friends and. I mean, you guys have some amazing um, accompaniments to the um, the all of the different libations that you have here, and there are some amazing drinks that you folks you have to come come down here and check it out. Um, check out the menu. Check out what they offer. They've also got some amazing popcorn. With, <laughs> I mean, just I, and I'm a popcorn fiend. So if you like popcorn and you like a little bit of alcohol. Maxine's is definitely the place to go, but I digress. I want to get back to this 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 big question that I have, and, and I don't know if you know the answer to this and how much of a chance that you had to really spin with Maxine's niece, but, I mean, a woman starting a bar in the 50s in Fayetteville, or anywhere for that matter, I mean, that's, that's kind of cool because that's a story that you don't hear all the time, and do you know anything around the backstory of that? Um, I know what is sort of the, you know, we have the story that's printed on the inside of our menu. Um, Andrea upkeeps a Wikipedia page about the history of Maxine's. I know um, that she was 24 years old. I know that she was single. I know she borrowed the money from either her parents or her grandparents and um, paid them back within a year. And it was $10,000. And I um, I kind of pieced together my own story about this place in my head, just looking at the history of it. I know that this started as a very small wood building, which there are a couple of pictures of in here. Um, And I know that in the early 60s, she tore that building down and rebuilt it. I know that Warren Seagraves designed the building for her, who apparently was some kind of a friend or regular of hers. And... Um, he's sort of an architectural big deal through the university uh, at that time, or maybe still is. And I know that she had two husbands, um, neither of which ever had any hand in operating her bar. Her second husband, um, her longest marriage, was um, he was a city attorney um, or worked at the city's attorney. attorney he was an attorney of some kind. Um, uh, we have a lot of pictures of the both of them. But it was always her place, and um, she was here every day. I mean, she was here with a cup of coffee and a footed mug. Um, She played dominoes. Uh, She smoked a lot of cigarettes in here. And we hear stories about her from people who have worked for her. Um, We never met her. And she has people that have carried on stories about her. Every alumni weekend, every football game weekend, we get people that drank here when or worked for her then. And so I've sort of pieced together my own, you know, story of how this place has evolved in my own head, but I wasn't here, so it's all completely made up. <laughs> no, that's fine. Well, I mean, you know, like they say in life, you have to develop your own narrative. Yeah. So, I mean, and I, I love that. I yeah. think that's great. Um, and, and I think it shouldn't be missed by anybody listening to this that a, a 24-year-old woman in the 50s started a bar that has lasted for 70 years. Uh, in, in various iterations and forms and, and it I can imagine her walking through the door and again I don't I don't know her I only to know her to see her photograph but just imagine imagine her walking into the door and opening this place up um, you know in the morning or getting things ready for the day and I mean there there are a lot of stories that these walls could tell absolutely you know I my I Ben and I and the bartenders here um, I think considered that consider it an honor to caretake this space for her. I think it's not lost on any of us here um, how crazy this industry is, especially the, you know, it's one thing to do espresso espresso and bagels at six in the morning type of a restaurant in the hospitality industry, but this is a whole different side of the hospitality industry, and I don't think it's lost on any of us um, the, the legacy of being in in the same space for almost 60 years and um, what she must have evolved with to continue to be here after that long. And I think um, 
for us, you know, when we come back down to these questions of what would Maxine do, which is a complete guess, and we have a lot of conversations about that with um, Andrea and her family, and you know, while we want to do things our way and have as much fun with it, I think it always comes down to the fact that she was a very shrewd businesswoman, and I think the fact that her name is still on the building and on the business, um, and that uh, it is continuing to exist after uh, she was here. I, um, for somebody who creates their own spaces and businesses for a living, I would be pretty proud. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes, that makes perfect sense. I, um, so how did you guys end up in Esquire magazine? And for, and for those, those listening just recently, like within the last week or so, um, there was a list, you know, Esquire, GQ, a lot of these magazines do these rankings of the top places, like top pizza place, top, the best pizza in the country, the best, you, you, you name it, the best barbecue, right? And, and, of course, we got Wright's Barbecue, who was actually on the podcast at one point in time, and they've made some of those best of lists. But you guys, Maxine's Tap Room was named one of the best bars in the United States, where you... Were you surprised by by being conferred with that status? Yeah, we don't know exactly how that happened. Um, we have been to some of the bars on that list, and they are uh, holy. They are impressive places. Um, we one of our um, bartenders, Francis uh, from Maxine's, just won. Um, went to the semifinals in a competition with a certain kind of liqueur and ended up at Death & Co. in Denver, and that was our, our first chance to go. And, um, man, some of these guys are really good at what they do. And I, um, you know, we have people reach out for story. We had a really lovely um, photo session in Southern Living a couple years ago. The Travel Channel made a really nice write-up about us being a really great place in a very unexpected part of the country. Um, and we've had a couple of national nods, which is really validating for especially living in this part of the country for somebody from the outside world that um, travels and sees a lot of places in a lot of big cities. Um, it is really nice for somebody to notice how hard we work. And um, I'm I, I mean, it's humbling that anybody thinks that we're doing a great job. But um, I think we got an email several months ago, and I sat down with a woman whose um, husband went to school here um, at U of A, and um, she had been here before, and uh, she handles you know food and beverage for the southeastern United States, and she wanted to come and sit down and try some cocktails and ask a lot of questions about the history of the building. And Ben and I kind of said, yeah, yeah, we'll believe that when it happens. But she didn't tell us what the article was about, and we didn't know. I and mean, when the article came out last week, our jaws both kind of dropped, and we thought, wow, thank you. That's very <laughs> nice of you. Um, we're pretty sure that they have made a mistake. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I mean, you know, we've both worked in restaurants for 30 years. I mean, we've been doing this a long time, and um, this is not an industry for the weak of heart. And small business in general is not for the weak of heart. But um, we, I, it's really lovely for somebody to say that we're doing a good job. Yeah, no, I, I can imagine. And certainly that is a, that is a great honor, a tremendous uh, accolade to have for what is has been a really established um, venue for, for quite some time. So kudos to you guys. And, and again, I, that's one of the reasons, in addition to, I had contacted you, contacted you well before that article came out. So I just want to put it on record that I knew that there was something special happening both here at Maxine's Tap Room, uh, at the Leverett Lounge, which we'll talk about in a second, and that you guys have had a handle on some really great um, options for people here in Northwest Arkansas, specifically here in Fayetteville. And so, you know, since we're talking about it, um, not to be outdone with what you have built here at Maxine's Tap Room, you guys also opened up what I, I've, I've seen coined as a nice local neighborhood restaurant in the Leverett Lounge. And I think maybe that's one of the best ways to describe it. It's not, you know, it's not, you know, in some strip mall somewhere. It's literally around 
a lot of neighborhood homes and it, it and the idea was to build a place a gathering place if you will where people from the neighborhood can walk and have a good meal and you know hang out and i assume that was your intention when you guys started that it absolutely was not our intention um the way that um leverett lounge opened was that we um have a friend named ab Merritt who wanted to open a restaurant and bar combined with a laundromat and she wanted us to do the restaurant side and she wanted to do the laundromat side and so we sort of um, worked on a building together where our half of the building was a restaurant and hers was the laundromat and uh, there's a door between the two of them um, the sort of a bay garage door and we opened it under a completely different concept of um, sliders and vintage sodas and it matched the laundromat next next door and um, within the first six months of us being open um, the laundromat side was doing very well and the restaurant side was absolutely not it was just tanking and you know we know that feeling we've done that one before Uh, so we uh, shut it down for 30 days and We opened the place that we thought would work in that location, and we completely transformed the atmosphere. Um, We utilized the equipment that was already there. We changed the menu. We changed the name, and we made a go at a completely different idea, and for some reason it took. Who knows? That's You just never know. We think we know what we're doing, and we actually, the older that we get, the more we realize that we have no idea. (laughs) What what you expect or what we're supposed to be doing with ourselves? So that's the serendipity of that that whole exercise. I think is just that you were able to to create something out of what you thought was the original intent. And as I assumed, you know, but because of the information I had read, that I think that was the 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 end result was that it became a neighborhood place to go and hang out. But yeah, I knew about the laundromat and I. Th- that is kind of a funky combination, if you will, and, and, and certainly I'm sure that a lot of people that are regulars at the Leverett Lounge can are, are thankful that you guys persevered and were able to kind of iterate and come up with a combination, a winning combination, if you will. And so, so tell us a, a little bit about your experience with the Leverett Lounge, because, again, that gets back to your roots of working in the service industry, specifically in a restaurant. And I've always told people, and I've even told my kids that the surefire way for you to develop some strong, soft skills, the ability to communicate with people, the ability to work with other people, multitask, to, multitask, mm-hmm. to be intuitive in your thinking mm-hmm. is to intuitive work in a restaurant and, yeah. and intuitive about people. I, I cut my teeth and I, you said you were 13. I was 16 when I started busing tables and then waiting tables in a restaurant. I was even too young to do that because I was serving alcohol and I wasn't supposed to. Right. But that was back in the day when they didn't talk about that. Yeah. But anyway, long story short, That helped formulate who I was, and it allowed me to interact with a wide variety of people and not be afraid to just connect with them. You know, Leverett is um, a special place for both my husband and I. Um, Ben was a saucier for years and worked the line. He has always uh, done back a house, and I have always thought that he was a phenomenal cook. Um, I've actually... We've been married for 19 years, and I think I've cooked twice in those 19 years. That has always been um, something that he he's good at, and so that just just his job now, and he's very good at it. Um, but you know, he we t- he took a long break from that. I mean, we did the bakery for you know 14 years, which is you know more of a production job. I mean, it, it got to a point where we we're doing a high volume. Um, it's a different kind of kitchen to work in a bakery than it is behind a line. Um, and the bar, while he is still um, utilizing his um, amazing palate and he still really loves um, talking about the balance of cocktails and, you know, what sort of what sort of type of cocktail, whether it's booze forward or bright or whatever it is, he loves to talk about that with people. I mean, none of these concepts are at all um, the same as working in um, a kitchen on the line. And so I think for him, it is a really nice visit to a place that he hasn't been in a long time. And um, he he really loves it. I mean, he works with a great crew of people um, that also love food and love cooking. Some of those people have been with us since it was the slider place at, um, you know, that wasn't working. They hung in there with us and they're still on staff and have watched it change with us. And 
they're still there with us. Um, and I, I don't know. He, I, I think that he is flattered, not to speak for Ben, but I think he's flattered that, um, that we are such a busy little place and that people uh, love what he makes because that's really what it comes down to is um, when you open a place that is either a bar or a restaurant or anything in hospitality is that you want people to leave happy with what you do. And so I think, um, I don't know, I think it's an interesting sort of evolution that, again, we didn't count on happening, but, um, but here we all are. Yeah. Well, I, I know I, I have, like I said, I've been to Maxine's. I have not been to Leverett Lounge. That is on my list of places to go. I hear the Korean fried chicken is out of this world. Um, the I've, Korean fried cauliflower, the vegan version of that, not that I usually say this, is actually better than the chicken, in uh, my opinion. Okay. And well, I don't usually, we don't usually say that about cauliflower in our lives, but. Well, since I've tried to embrace a, a, as much of I, as much as I can a plant-based diet, I will have to try that for sure. It's pretty good. Yeah. But I also <laughs> understand that, that, that Ben's sauces are, are also amazing and that, that they, you guys have given new meaning to leeks and some of the other uh, side dishes that, that come along with this. And, you know, it's, it's hard on a podcast to envision this. I mean, it's, it, you know, food is a very visual subject matter. That's the worst thing about watching the Food Channel for me is watching people <laughs> eat things and go, isn't this so good? <laughs> I'm like, what is the point of that? Yeah, it, it is difficult. But uh, I will say that um, But I've, I've just heard so many good things. And, and certainly I know that a lot of people on our listening audience, and that's what I was explaining to you before we started the podcast, a lot of people have mentioned the Leverett Lounge. I mean, it's Aww. one of, one of outside of between that and the Preacher's Son up in Bentonville. Awesome. And, you know, it's, it's just really nice to see such a wide variety of options available to people here in Northwest Arkansas outside of going to, you know, Red Robin and you know, nothing, nothing wrong with it, any of the chains that are out there. But there are a lot of really good independent restaurants uh, and independent um, bars and, and the like that that are available to everybody here in northwest Arkansas. And certainly, you know, what Hannah and Ben have been able to do have been um, have been a testament to that. So we really we really appreciate that. So so before we end this, what are you what's what's next for you guys? What, what mountain are you trying to conquer next? We have no idea. Um, our, our son just graduated from high school. Congratulations. Thank you. We are really <laughs> happy that he's moving out soon. Um, he, I'm, he's been, I mean, it's just been the three of us, um, you know, for 18 years, 19, if you count when, you know, we, he was not outside of me yet, but he was right. still here. And it's a really weird feeling to have one less person um, that's a part of your decision-making equation in the family unit. Unit. I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, we've um, we've talked about uh, we've talked about liquidating everything that we own and moving to Barcelona and starting over. You know, we've talked about uh, spending summers in Colorado closer to my dad. We've talked about living in a van and making grilled cheese at some kind of a, you know, in some kind of Red Rocks parking lot. You know, I don't know what we're going to do. Wow. We have no idea. But um, it's a little, I don't, we don't, I don't know. We're going to shake it out and see what it's like to have one less person in our home. But yeah. um, right now we're busy. We're, our lives are full. We um, live in a wonderful community full of people who, some of them are hospitality industry people, but we have a lot of creative people wonderful, creative, amazing human beings that live um, in our radius right here. And um, I, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do next. You just never know. I'm, yeah. I, we don't count on it anymore. Well, and that's fine. And I didn't mean to put you on the spot about no. that. I just, I just, you know, I always like to ask because people, sometimes people think, well, this is, you know, you have success in one thing and then people try to pigeonhole you and say, well, then you're, that's it. You've got Maxine's for the next 30 years. And it's like, well, maybe I don't <laughs> want to do that for the next 30 years. It's just like, I started it and created something great. And just like Maxine had it and she ran it. Now you guys have taken it and been able to do something amazing with it. So, the, you know, it, I think it's always exciting to see what the future will hold. What would you say to individuals that, that don't know a lot about Northwest Arkansas? Maybe they're thinking of relocating here for work or they've heard other good things about it, but they don't, you know, what would you say to that individual that, that um, what advice would you give them or, or just something that you would share with them about this area that makes it special? 
I would tell them there's absolutely nothing good happening here and to please not move here. <laughs> there's really not a lot to offer, and um, we're doing just fine on our own. <laughs> right, um, the best kept secret. So I don't know. I, I don't, we have a lot of friends that live all over the country that ask us what we're doing living here, and um, I think the people that have ended up here make it incredibly special. I mean, I love... Um, the Buffalo River, the mountains here are incredible. I'm from Denver, and I grew up with the Rocky Mountains, and so these sort of look like hills but to me, but they are definitely no joke. Um, I mean, it's gorgeous here. Um, I love that we have a town that is this size, and we have such a good small business community. I love that people are inspired to open their own retail stores or sock shops or you know, distilleries or whatever it is that, you know, their own breweries. I, I love that people are inspired and feel like they can do that here. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. If you're lucky enough to move here, then I'll meet you when you get here. Right. No, well, there you go. (laughs) Um, and I think that's, that's good advice because like I said, I had no idea what to expect when I got here and I, I have to say it was a pleasant surprise and, you know, it's not the big city, but it's also not, you know, a small country town anymore. Yeah. I mean, it has changed quite a bit. So I um, think we have a really um, special quality of life for the size town that we live in. I mean, we have wonderful performances that come through Theater Squared and the Walton Arts Center. Uh, we have access to a lot of different types of food. Um, I would love it if we had a more diverse um, food culture here. Um, but I, but I, but I think it's getting better every day. Yeah. Um, the A Street Market in Bentonville. Absolutely. I mean, you've got I mean, a little bit of everything. Bite NWA is happening at the end of at the end of June. Right. Uh, you've got the Roots Festival in August. I mean, it just every time I look up and I'm like constantly struggling trying to say, oh man, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about that. There's always something new happening. That's why it took me so long to get back to you. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. It was worth. It was well worth the wait, and and certainly. Uh, we appreciate that, and um, I, I'm a, I am going to put you on the spot. When, okay. you, when you aren't working a lot of hours, when you aren't at the Leverett Lounge, when you aren't at Maxine's Tap Room, is there any place that you go to get a good meal? Um, there are. I do have some favorite places in town. We actually, now that it is June, we are going to finally take our Leverett Lounge uh, Christmas party this weekend (laughs) and the reason that it's so late is partially because we're so busy during the holidays but also because we've been waiting for uh, Jason to open Heirloom in Rogers Okay, and so Sunday night we are going to eat at his new place and I cannot wait Um, we also you know we cook um, a a family meal at the end of our shift every night at Leverett so we eat a lot Um, even when we're not working we eat with our staff that's hiring (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we eat with our staff a lot, and um, we we really travel. I mean, when we, Ben and I get a moment that we can take three or four days, I mean, we have been known to just get in the car and make a really fast three-day trip to New Orleans just to check in with another place and sort of recharge. And that could be Denver. It could be anywhere. But we love a road trip. We, I mean, even if it's on the West Coast, we prefer to drive there if we can make the time for it. Yeah. So yeah. we travel a lot. And mostly if we're going out and we're eating and drinking at other places, then um, we, we just work so much here that it's easiest for us to do when we're somewhere else. That's what we do on vacation. That's, and How that's, lame is that? That's no, what we there's do nothing. For living, no, that's, that's fine. That's fine. And actually, I like that because what a lot of people don't realize is that that Fayetteville is actually Northwest Arkansas is perfectly located. I mean, we're like a 12 hour drive to Santa Fe, 12 hours to Denver, right. uh, maybe eight to 10 hours to New Orleans, depending on how fast you drive, mm-hmm. you know, five hours to Dallas. Nashville's eight, in that circumference. I mean, Nashville's in that circumference. Memphis. Memphis. New Orleans. You, you've got yeah. some Kansas City. I mean, you've got some amazing places to just seek refuge from if you just want to get away. Once you get here to Northwest Arkansas, you're kind of close to everything in the center of it all. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think that's the best way to describe it. But, wow, this is this is really great. I, I love the stories that you're sharing. And I actually remember when I worked at a kind of a family-run restaurant, we used to eat dinner after the shift. And just like you're describing what you guys do at Leverett Lounge, I can remember what that was like just sitting around with the staff and everybody just having, you know, just that 
just it's like being at home and having dinner, you know, and there's something about that. So I, I certainly hope that you're able to to maintain that that level of connectivity with your staff and, and as you continue to grow. And, and I just want to encourage anyone listening, got to check out Maxine's Tap Room. If you're of age, you need you need to you need to check out Leverett Lounge. And uh, you can also see the little bread company, see kind of where it all started and, and get an idea uh, about what uh, what Ben and, and Hannah were able to do at the beginning and what it's become. And the fact that now that it's been run, it's being run by somebody else, but it's being run well and they've got great offerings there. So certainly want to encourage you to do that. There's so much here in northwest Arkansas for you to check out. And I mean, Hannah, I, I got to thank you so much for, for taking the time to do this. And, uh, I, you know, we're going to go ahead and end this because i'm going to need another cup of coffee in a second (laughs) but we really appreciate you doing that and i don't know if you have any final word that you want to share with our audience just thanks for having me and for showering me with all these compliments (laughs) you've said only nice oh well good that's right you know what like i always tell people i'd rather hear my eulogy before i die than 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 (laughs) than after i'm dead because i will never be able to hear it so that's why you always got to share good news with people often early and often as opposed to waiting until after it's too late so that's my word for the day. Uh, Hannah Withers, Maxine's Tap Room, Leverett Lounge, between her and her husband, Ben, and their son, uh, they've done an, an amazing job here in Northwest Arkansas. Come check them out whenever you get a chance. If you do go to Maxine's Tap Room, if you do go to Leverett Lounge, let them know that you heard about it here on I Am Northwest Arkansas. That's all that we have for you this week. We really appreciate you taking time to listen to the podcast. Um, please, if you get a chance, give us a review on iTunes. Actually, it's not iTunes anymore. It's just called Apple Podcasts. But give us a review. Let us know what you think about the podcast or on whatever format that you listen to this podcast. We'd love to hear your thoughts about it. You can check us out at IamNorthwestArkansas.com online. And uh, certainly we're on Facebook. We're also on Instagram at I am Northwest Arkansas. So we look forward to connecting with you next week. Thank you so much for enjoying this episode of I am Northwest Arkansas. We will see you later. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.